Hello everyone, Price Good here, and welcome back to more Tears of the Kingdom. Last time I got a little sappy about the length of this series running, or runtime rather. Admittedly, I say that as I look at the episode numbers, say it's number 190. And today, we're finally heading up into Gerudo Highlands proper. This one, I made sure to keep mental track of in the in the back of my brain, I say as I tap my temple. I made sure to keep ta uh, track of this in the back of my brain. Because this particular um, this particular manuscript of uh, Misko's uh, manuscript, uh, let me pull it up here really quick. Just a reminder for those that haven't that are just kind of oh oh no sorry they're over here. I should probably check back in on that garden once I get a second. Um, it is this one. Yeah, so I'll actually put that on the tracker for now. But yeah, uh, this particular manuscript quest is actually where we're going to be going almost directly towards as we speak. Now I need to get on a shelf of some kind here quick. By the way, this is this is very much similar to what I did. This is very much what I did when I started, I started getting more stamina it, when I uh, when I was playing Bre the Breath of the, or through the Breath of the Wild, the Breath of the Wild. I, I technically, it's right. Where I basically cheesed out, um, where I cheesed out, you know, spots you can stand on the side of cliff faces to regain stamina. So this is basically what this is. Instead of coming at this, because I'm pretty sure the normal way they want you to do is, uh, we haven't seen it here, but there is a path. Like this, this is a bridge, oddly enough, called Dig Doggers Bridge, that has a... That has a path that kind of comes through here and it snakes through a, it snakes through a couple like bends and valleys here. It like snakes up here and then it goes down here and then it bleeds out right into the Gerudo Desert. And I think from the Gerudo Desert area is how they want you to uh, organically get to the Gerudo Highlands. Now that could be a total flub and flaw in my logic. But that's at least how I think they intended for you to do this. But anybody who's known me long enough knows that I don't... I. I will tech typically follow the intended path. I'll follow the de designer's intent. I'm one of a handful of people that played Sonic 06 on, for the internet and managed to not encounter any majorly debilitating bugs in the game because I followed the de designer's intended, de uh, intended design. Or I guess the game planner's intended design? <coughs> the programmer's? Somebody intended for me to go a certain way, and I said, yes, yes, sir, and how high would you like me to jump? Ooh, tumbleweeds. So tumbleweeds, uh, these are kind of new. They don't do anything. They're not hostile, but... Oh, uh, I took... I wanted to... Uh, it didn't... Oh, man. I wanted to burn it, because it actually is a thing. Anyway, you double burn it. Oh, or it's going to go. Well, that's... My plan to burn those is not going to go as well as I hoped. Anyway. But uh, Tumbleweeds are kind of a new addition here. And they're oddly enough like the... When you're in this uh, desert-y area of Hyrule. This uh, lower... I guess you should say southeastern. Like it, it's really just these two providences. I like how not now for the first time. I'm probably calling the proper term providences. These uh, southeastern providences... Western. This is the west. These southwestern providences are probably where you only see them. But think of them, I'll see if I can't just bash it open for one. Think of it like uh, wild barrels. Oh, I did break it open. Neat. Okay. They're kind of like wild barrels. Except they're not as, they're not as reliable for dropping things. And, but they, and you know, they might sometimes have arrows. Sometimes they may have food. Sometimes they may have small food like sunshrooms. Just, there is a possibility for something to be here. Now, anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to make a mistake and just drive this as is. Now, if I get too cold, I'll know that my, uh, I'll know that my planned. Cool. If I, if I get too cold, I'll know that my planned assault to. I know, I'll know that my planned uh, assault to get up to this area without much problem is going to be. Uh, my, hmm. Well, that's a wash. 
All right, have fun over there, buddy. Uh, I'll know in just a minute if my uh, planned deterrence from having to put on cold resist gear with this uh, Dinral shard will be for will be for points will be um moot points or not. Man, <laughs> it is kind of a giddy feeling though that now that I'm at this stage of the game where I'm at right now is I I feel like I'm almost at a climax to this to this whole game. I feel like I can almost finish the game, which is kind of weird to say that I feel like I can almost finish the game. Anyway. Well, I only got I only got half the rewards and not the half I should have gotten. Hmm, do I have a I guess getting this Gerudo shield wouldn't be better over this one. So I'm still going to hang on to one, but what I will say though, okay, my uh, hope was for not. So I do have to at least, uh, at least for now, I do have to put on cold pants. There goes the set bonus, but it's fine. And I, oh, I actually got the likestone, neat. And of course, if I goof up enough, I'm going to put on more cold stuff. But anyway, Gerudo Scimitar though, that, that is actually something that I, in general, think like it's a bad, better idea. Now, what I'm going to do with the Gerudo Scimitar is with, uh, because I think I also killed the Silver Lionel off screen for parts. No, bad puppy. I think I also killed the Silver Lionel off screen for this. Let me get off of this upwards draft. So, the Gerudo Scimitar, Strong Fusion. I think I told you that these are super good for elemental type things, like the, for example, the Fire electric or frost Lizalfo's uh, horns. I think this just applies to all fusion materials. It's just that it's that it's just that uh, it, elemental type of fusions just get made better doing it well with that. So now that I prefaced it, uh, sort. Yeah, I did a few and I've got enough, uh, and I've got enough maces, so let's just do this. So regardless, this will still be a pretty good weapon. But yeah, this, double it, that is a boss killer. It's It won't last very long, but that is a boss killer. Strong fusion, once it has something fused to it, effectively doubles its overall attack power. Now, I would like to sort this, but it's probably just going to get slowly shuffled to the back of the line as I go, so. Uh, let me put this on for now. And then I find something of note to fuse, so that I'll do it then. But anyway. I'll probably get back on that whole sentimental sentimental thing with uh, completing the game. But first things first, we have a Korok. I can tell it's a Korok right there. This is a Korok. But also, of the manuscript, which uh, I don't know if I've cut out an ep I may have cut no nah, well, I don't know how I'm going to do an episode spacing-wise, because this is me we're talking about, and I don't think too far in advance when I do these videos. I'm just kind of like, okay, this is a good spot, spot for a spot stop, and I stop. Okay, let me look down. Okay, I do have to, I do have to, I do have to climb it. Uh, where we're climbing now is the, oh, maybe not here. Uh, can I squeeze through that? I am going to go with... No! We're okay. Just find that belt. But yeah, where we're standing right now is... is uh, Let me pull up the eventual. Is... You'll say it's a... The Towering Eighth. There is a location. You can't make it out on the map right now just because of the nature of the Gerudo Desert. But right about here... Or no, maybe it's closer to here. Somewhere in this rough general like nine square area that I'm circling right now is basically an area that has uh, seven tall statues referred to as the seven, uh, the seven Gerudo. I don't want to say deities, but deities might be the word. Uh, seven Gerudo figureheads, I guess is also a nice way to put it who the Gerudo tribe kind of look up to for their ways of life and how they're, uh, you know, their ways of being a warrior, basically. Well, who they look to for guidance. So, the manuscript refers to a towering eighth, 
which now that I look back this way, you can see that looks like a towering something or other. Uh, do I have to move that? Hold on. I may have to move that. There's a rock. There's a rock that's going to be in the way, and I hopefully I don't spend too long trying to explain this to. Hopefully I don't spend too long trying to explain this to like get this done. Oh, that's her head. Well, her head don't move. That's unfortunate. All right, fine, fine, immature scooter, you win. You can say the joke. So no head. Anyway, now I got that on my system. Um, that's, uh, but yeah, that's the towering eight they mentioned in the manuscript. But there is also something on the brooch of the statue. We'll call it a brooch, because I think. Well, how do you do? That's that's ex almost exactly what we need. I think there. Yes, there is one out in the wild too. So, uh, the brooch. I'm gonna call it brooch. The brooch that is positioned on that statue actually is a light capturing post. If you remember Ocarina of Time, that game loved playing with light. Well, this is a mirror. It's an omnidirectional mirror. So you can attach these to your shield as well to basically make your own impromptu uh, mirror shield. But what we need to do with this is basically we need to raise it up just high enough to hit the brooch. Leave it there for a minute. And after enough power stored, that opens it up. And now that we're done with that, we can just drop it. We won't see that we won't see that touched on for quite some time, but do know you could like I said, you can make your own impromptu mirror shield. And you will need to do that for things in the Gerudo area. Not towards the end not until like the end of it, but you will need to use it. Anyway. Now this particular uh, manuscript took me a while to Oh hey buddy! Hey, remember when I was talking about Gibdos? That's them. Uh, oh, we did see them in the underworld a little bit, actually. So we can... I know... I'm only remembering from what I've recently from the court. So we saw Gibdos at one point. I talked about them. I handled them. This, much like in a lot of other Zelda things, this is the first time we see Gibdos. And this is the first time you can see Gibdos proper. The only thing you have to worry about with Gibdos when it comes to handling them... Come here. The only thing you have to worry about when it comes to handling Gibdos is hit them with an element. It doesn't matter what element, just hit them with an element. Oh boy. Although unlike their... Although unlike their, uh... Yeah, unlike their, uh... What do you call it? How do I want to put it? Unlike most of their other representations in the series, they won't decide, oh, tra Tasty Traveler. Ah, oh, it recovered. It won't decide, ooh, Tasty Traveler. Let me go ahead, let me get a piece of that. They'll actually get him. But yeah, instead of being like, ooh, Tasty Traveler, let me get let me get a snack of that. Let me, let me bite a piece off of that. <laughs> They're just very slow and shambling and have crazy high defense. Like, granted, I'm, I'm not wearing my full Berserker set right now. I'm not wearing my full Berserker set right now. And I'm also using a weapon that's arguably the weakest in my arsenal as we speak. But they, like, even if I'm fully kitted out, even using a boss weapon, they will take negligible damage, almost as little to the point as, uh, can I just turn this on from here? No, I actually have to help out. Tulin, if you'd be so kind. Also get used, just remember this tactic for later, but, um, yeah, they have crazy high defense until you take the initiative. Uh, until you do take the initiative to use an element, an elemental attack to... Really? Okay, I just had to get stupid close. Until you take the initiative to blow their... Uh, or to... Well, Elion, I think even Tulin could count for just to like, kind of like use a wind as an element. Just to blow their armor off, and then they become just about as squishy as uh, uh, get words about just about as squishy as any style creature. But anyway, with me stumbling over my words, that's the manuscript done. Now I also, unfortunately, before we can leave, I need to find the bubble frog in this cave. That has a lot of sticky lizards. Now 
No, I don't think... I mean, that's not uncommon, but... Sorry. I couldn't resist to uh, have... Ooh, Ruby! I couldn't, I couldn't uh, not take a chance to take a poke of myself. Um, I think... Or, rather, I don't... Nope. Lost what I was trying to say already. Uh, Bubble Frog won't be this close to the start, so I gotta kinda... Keep my eyes to the sky. Because I, I haven't even heard the Bubble Frog yet. Uh, yeah, that worked. Wow! Lucky me. Okay. Um... I suppose I'll have a minute to parse this. Let me just peek around. Because I think that pile there is the only other place where something could be. Tulin, can I borrow your assistance again? But yeah, that is... Yeah, I know it's above me, but I'm looking for something a little more... relevant to my interests, so to say. Oh! It's behind there. Good thing you're recharged, Tulin, because I found my goal. And we're probably just gonna pop up through the ground here to get at to get at what I'm look uh, to what the game is complaining about. You're up high. Cool talk. I feel like I was talking about something a lot more a little more uh, profound and whatnot. Probably the whole sentimental conversation thing I was mentioning. Oh, I was like, what was that? No, the bubbles just popped. Uh, break this. Because I do need a lot more Luminous Stone. Because I, uh, even though I'm not going to use it, I feel like I need to show off the Luminous Stone to an extent. But actually, once we get to a later part of the game, we'll actually have a plenty of opportunity to show off that Luminous Stone in great detail. Or the, uh, the Luminous Armor, rather. Anyway, going up. Mm, I'll probably think more about that whole... Okay, we have to go... We have to get more cold. Unless I have something that gives heat. Or cold resistance. Cold attack. I have a lot of these. I'm not missing any health, so I may not... I may just put on armor for a bit, and then when I go to fight, I may go ahead and just put that up. But anyway, um... God, I just saw the CC's hat and I was like, dang, that is stupid looking. Anyway. Well, I'm kind of looking at my timeline readout. I don't know what I've done so far. I suppose I should finish my thought on uh, the whole long-winded thing before uh, before it gets too much later on it. Because I'll have to like split that conversation in half. In short, oh, I just get this one. I'll just talk about once I get out of the shrine. Hopefully, me and the me and editing will know to, to split this up. Yeah, I've. I don't know why. I well, I do know. I think at some point, I do remember there is a picture I will have to take. Th thanks to things I've been watching of this, there is a picture I'll have to take at some point. At least one. But also a series of a, a series of stable quests that I may dip my do my toes into by before we leave this region. Have enough for another heart upgrade. But. But more so back on the topic of long running series because. I feel like. Oh, is it. I can't tell if it's up there or just on the other side of this wall, but I think that's where the. I think that's where the Skyview Tower is. Just on the other side of this large base. But. While I'm in the area and thinking about it. Actually, while I am thinking about it, uh, I guess I won't have the long, that long way to think. Hey, you know, come here. C come, come here. Roll over things and roll over them. These are all... Okay, that won't work. Because I don't have anything attached to it. You know, Bo? What do I pay you for? They're, these are all mini frost taluses, so these are going to be a pain to fight. I won't fight all of them. But so, Oh, there's more? Dang, there's more around the corner. Alright, you know, Bo? Either start swinging or I'm going to handle it. Alright. Swing and a miss, but big man. That's fine. I'll take that L. 
Oh, for Pete's sake. I don't even know Pete, but for his sake. I'm trying to handle some other things, my friends. God, I still love that I I still love that I know this tech now. Um Oh yeah, we walked past we walked past it and that's kind of where I started to go off. So in these snowy areas, and I guess to a lesser extent, even though we're literally gonna be looking at it, so let's go ahead and just take a peek. Uh that's backwards. How did I get turned around? Am I stupid? I mean yes, but am I stupid? Increase it. But I guess I can this can kind of shit well, I guess I can't show because I don't have the parts here. But in this area, and I keep saying the Gerudo area, so people who are know are much longer known fans of the series will be aware of this. We're dealing with a lot of snow and sand in this in these two regions in the southwest. So they'll start giving us machines that are sleds, for lack of a better term. Now I can't remember if I have a auto build that uses all these parts, but let's go ahead and pull into my history because I don't think it was very long ago when I've made something of this nature. Well, I know what I can do for with it at least. I can be lazy and get this down. And then put that down. Oh, I didn't want to put that on. Oops. Um. Thank you. But the, uh, a lot of times in this area, oh, oh there, well, you already have a thing on here. I may, I may put this as a favorite. They're going to give you this sled device. We actually saw this back in Terrytown when I used it as kind of like a schooner. I, I don't know if schooner is the right word, but as a uh, water fairing device. So I want to favorite this for travel, but we basically are going to make a sled, a sled. We're basically making a bobsled. We are the Jamaican bobsled team. God, I feel like I need to see cool runnings, but I'm heading out this way specifically because I do want to show you where I, in, where I basically newer white line is and use it to grind a lot. And I cannot go that way, so let's try this again. It is a sled. It doesn't have wheels though. I kind of wish I had this for the uh, Lanayru area when you're going up the mountain, but no, no. Yeah, that, that is that is 100% a white Lionel. So here's what we're going to do. It should only take, it, don't, it shouldn't take too long, but I am going to fight this just to cut down the number of white Lionels I need to fight. Let's go for that six minute one. And just to save us both a little bit of time, I'm going to end the episode now and uh, come back to you when we're partway through fighting the white Lionel. So... Everyone, I do want to thank you all so much for watching this episode of Tears of the Kingdom, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.